I mentioned at a, comp at, a, at, a, at a function here for the higher education last year that I didn't get to play third level myself. Uh, as they say in Yorkshire, I was sent down the pit at a very young age. So I didn't get to actually uh, to, uh, amuse myself in third level education or to play any sports. But I am aware, obviously, as everybody else, with a head on their shoulders, of the success of higher education games over the last decade or so. And I think that, you know, when we look at the competitions and we look at how strong they are, obviously there's a great number of people behind the scenes, gentlemen to my right, who work very hard to make that happen. But it doesn't happen by accident. If you look at any competitions, even the international rules or the Railway Cup, which a lot of people want to slip and throw in the Railway Cup these days, but it persists, it continues, and it continues for one reason. It continues because players want to experience playing our games with players from other counties. You want to share that pitch. You want to experience what it's like to play with other guys that you know, other girls that you know. You want to actually live that experience. And that's why the Railway Cups have continued, because the players love them. And that's why the international rules has despite you know, an awful lot of criticism, some of it from myself in the past, continues to try because the players love it. But I don't think there's any greater passion shown by young players than that exhibited in our third level competitions. At your age, at your time of development as footballers and hurlers, to get the opportunity of sharing a pitch with other lads from other counties who have great futures in front of them, it's a unique opportunity not just to thrive in that environment, but to learn other things and to make friends. And it's one reason why the higher education competitions are held in such high esteem by everybody, because the games are just so good. The goodness in the games, I also think, has been reflected in the development of getting football and hurling over the last decade. I was a player in the 80s, it's light years ago, many, many decades ago. The game has just, it's just been transformed. It's evolved to a level that none of us would ever have imagined a generation ago. And we have, it, we have our critics. We all are critics. We all have to take turns in sitting down in the critics' chair and give our views. Um, as journalists, it's our, it's our role more than anything. But when you look at the development of Gaelic football in particular, and you look at the manner in which the Ulster teams came through in Tyrone and Armagh, and you look more recently at Donegal, the magnificence in which Jim McGuinness built a team and brought it to Croke Park. What they achieved. And you look at Dublin this year, and the youthful manner in which they just stormed, absolutely stormed the stadium this year. None of that has happened by accident. It's happened because there are young players coming through the ranks in every county who are more ambitious, who are more intelligent, and who care to be better footballers at a younger age better hurlers at a younger age than any group of footballers or hurlers in any other generation. So it's a credit to you all, and it's because of the players in higher education competitions that our games are thriving at every other level. So thank you for that. <coughs>